In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this gradient effect in DaVinci Resolve. Now, this is going to be a very basic tutorial and it's going to be very beginner friendly, but you can use the technique that I'm going to show you in this video to create different sorts of gradient styles in DaVinci Resolve using the Fusion tab. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So right here, we're just going to add in this Fusion composition. Let's head over to the Fusion page and add in our background. Connect this with the media out. Now right here, I'm going to change the type to gradient. And from here, let's go ahead and change the color. So let's go right here. Let's go somewhere around here, some blue color. And over here, I'm just going to change this to black. And then right here in the middle, if you click on it, you can create another one. And let's go with a little lighter shape, something like this. So maybe something like this. All right, so now you can go ahead and add in this rectangle mask, connect this with the background. And over here, you will notice that we have this cropped out, but we need to bring this background colors right in so that this fits in this background. But first thing we need to do is the shape that we created with this rectangle. Let's go ahead and change the width to 0 0.4 and the height. Let's change this to 0 0.3 maybe. Okay, so let's change this to 0. 5 and actually let's change the height to 0.5 and the width to 0.4 so something like this so that we can get this rectangle sort of a shape and now what we need to do is click on background and from here you can just drag this in so it's just you can simply just move this right here and also you can move this one right here as well so this is the kind of shape that you will get and of course, you can now play around with this. And this is how it looks. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is while you have this background selected, press Control Space and search for directional blur. So you can use this one, the second one right here. And from here, let's go ahead and change the blur strength to 0 0.8. And let's change the blur angle to 140. So something like this. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is while you have this background directional blur selected, you can just click on this merge. And right here, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the rectangle and the background, press Ctrl C, and then unselect and press Ctrl V so that we can have a duplicate. And you can now connect this background with this merge. So we have a copy of this. But now, while you have this background selected, press Ctrl Space and search for Gaussian blur. So add in this Gaussian blur right here. And now let's change the strength to 0 0.5. So it looks something like this. Now you might notice that this is very subtle, but if you unselect it, you will notice the difference. So right here, this is how it looks. But if you add in this Gaussian blur, it gets a little more blurry. So we don't need like a solid shape like this. We need a blur, but we don't need to do too much of a blur. Otherwise the shape will just become something else. So this is the kind of shape that we need. Now, the next thing is we need to add in a film grain. So right here with this merge selected, press control space and search for film grain. So right here, when we have this film grain, you can just select this time lock so that this doesn't move. And now you can just play around with this or you can just keep this at default. I'm going to keep this at default, but of course, you can try play around with this to get a different sort of a effect. There is no hard rule for this. You can just play around with this. And now while you have this, Film grain selected, press control space and search for glow. All right, so now let's change the glow size all the way to 100. And you will now notice that we get this glowing sort of a shape. So you can either keep this at this setting, or what you can do is if you want to flicker this glow, you, you can say something like this you want to make it flicker. What you can do is right click on the glow size. Click on Modify With and then go over to Shake. Then in the Modifiers tab, what you need to do is change the smoothness, let's say at 4. And then in the minimum, in the maximum, you can change this to 50. So if you play this right now, you will notice a slight subtle, you can say, glowing. And of course, you can increase the size from here. So for example, if we go back to the Modifiers and change the maximum to 100 and play this, you will notice that this is now getting a more 
more glowing effect so it depends on the kind of effect that you want so i'm just going to go with 50 for now and of course you can play around with the smoothness as well so for example let's go with 10 which was the default one you will notice that it will take more time but if you want to increase this increase the speed so let's say if you go over to 2 and play this you will notice that we get a more faster you can say glowing effect so these are the some of the settings that you can play around with this but i'm just going to go with let's just go with five for now and this looks good all right and finally if we select this and click on this transform so right after glow we have this transform node added and what we can do is just add a angle rotation so let's go over to zero frames create a keyframe right here and then go all the way to the end and let's just change this to 360. so if you play this you will see this is how it looks now if you want to move this in the opposite direction what you can do is just add in this minus right here and if we play this this is how it will look but i'm just going to keep this at 360 without the minus so this is how it looks and of course you can also click on this invert transform you don't have to put the minus you can just click on the invert transform and this will do the same thing so it depends on the kind of rotation that you're looking for so right here it looks good okay so now if we go back to the main timeline you will notice that this is our gradient this is how it looks but of course i had a different sort of a gradient shape right here as you will notice so how do you get that so let's go over to this once again and from here what you can do is let's go ahead and click on this glow and then click on this color corrector so right here what you can do with this color corrector is you can change it any different color that you want so for example if we go right here at this orange you will get this or orange type of gradient and you can just rotate this to get any different sort of shape that you want so the one that you saw in the video that i have or the preview that i have this is the one that i was going with so something like this it was something like this so as you can see this looks the same now and you can of course play around with this you can now choose any color that you want so let me just go with this blue this time something like this and now let's just go ahead and add in a text right here and see how this looks so here you can see you can add in any text in front of it you can add any more graphics in front of it you can of course animate the text as well but the main thing to show you in this video was just how you can add these gradient backgrounds and of course like i said you can play around with the colors the color wheel right here and you will get a different sort of a shape so maybe something like this and like i said if you want to move the rotation you can just go ahead click the invert transform and that's it now one final thing that i would like to show you is that for example if we move this and if you play this now or if we extend it so let's say we want to extend it and if you play this right now you will see that this will stop right here it won't go further but for example you want this to go even further you want this to extend up till the clip duration that you have so let me just undo this for now and go back to the fusion composition so right here after the transform press control space and search for keyframe stretcher so don't do anything just add in this keyframe stretcher node and go back to the timeline and now if you extend it so let's say we want to extend the video and if you play this right here you will notice that this is now playing throughout the video so the thing with key keyframe stretcher is that it will just extend the duration of your clip or your fusion composition to however you want it but of course it will slow it down so for example the animation of the rotation that we had this just slowed down a little bit and even if we increase it a little more the we increase the length even little more you will notice that this goes even slower so that's the only thing that you need to keep in mind and of course vice versa if you decrease this this will now get faster so this is something that you need to keep in mind while you have this keyframe stretcher node so right here you can just keep this keyframe stretcher node and you can just reuse this now and one other thing that you can do is you can either save this as a fusion composition or 
you can just drag this in right here and this will create this fusion composition right here and now you can just use this anywhere in your timeline so for example you want to add this multiple times you can just drag in from here you don't have to copy it again and again you can just simply add this in again and again and for example you want multiple shapes so you can just put this in at the front you can decrease the size move this at the side and you can even change the rotation angle to give it a slightly different animation. So for example, this is how it will look. And of course, you can do this again, add this in again, and change it. So let's reduce this, change the rotation angle, something like this. You can even change the pitch and the yaw from here to give it a slightly different look. And this is how it will look. So of course, you can play around with this and this is a good way to add in backgrounds for your videos and one final thing i would like to show you is if you select all of these and you can now right click you will get the option to create new compound clip you can hit it and this will just create a composition for you and now you can add in this text again something like this but just different ways of playing around with this gradient that you see right here this is the purpose of what i'm doing in this video the reason is to show you how you can just play around with the gradients how you can add them how you can add them in a way that that is easy for you to access them that's the reason why i showed you this otherwise i already have a video on compound clips you can watch that in detail if you want to know more about it but the main idea is to show you how you can add gradients in davinci resolve so this was it for this video i hope you found this video useful and i will see you in the next one